Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. And today we have a really dumb video idea. We have a Ryzen 5 5600X. It's one of the top gaming CPUs out there, especially for the money. It competes with everything that Intel has to offer and even competes with AMD's own upper tier offerings, whether it's the 5800X, 5900X, or 5950X, and it does so at a much lower price than most of those other top tier gaming CPUs. And today I'm not gonna give it a fighting chance. We have this, an Athlon 3000G box, but inside, oh, inside, we have the cooler to end all coolers. This is my look of disappointment. But you know what's not disappointing? Today's video sponsor, and that is the coldest water, which is sitting inside of the coldest water bottle right here. Now, if you like water bottles with a nice texture, plenty of color options, some nice grippy bits on the bottle, you can clip the bottle somewhere. This thing is great. See the links in the video description down below for more information on ordering your own. They also have a running giveaway that you can enter to win a bottle like this. And there's also a discount code down there. Once again, see those links in the description down below. Need some refreshment going into this. This is gonna be a, uh, a hot CPU. So basically here, we have this cooler. It's designed for the Athlon 3000G. This is the cooler that's been shipped with some of these Athlon AM4 CPUs. It's basically a stock AMD cooler from years gone by, except the aluminum piece, I believe, is significantly smaller than it used to be on like the FX chips that AMD used to have. And these fans with these at least used to be notoriously loud. My guess is they're probably gonna keep noise under control a little bit better by just running them at lower RPMs, which is what they've done with the uh, more recent Wraith Spire and Wraith Stealth coolers uh, than the original Wraith Spire and Wraith Stealth coolers. So today we're just gonna mount this terrible tiny heat sink onto the 5600X, throw it into an Ida stress test and well, we're gonna see what happens. On the bright side, it does use this clip mounting mechanism, so it's very easy to mount. All you do, lower it down, and it does have thermal paste already included. I'm using the stock thermal paste, for better or for worse. And you just tighten it down with, oh, there we go. Manage that cable a little bit, get it out of the way, and voila, we have a terrible, terrible cooling situation now on the 5600X. So I'm gonna get it plugged into the monitor, get this thing fired up and uh, run some IDA and see what happens. Okay, so now I have this test bench with 5600X, the Athlon 3000G's cooler running over to my main system with the capture card so I can capture what's happening on the screen. And now I wanna open up IDA 64 and see just what the idle temperatures are doing before we start hitting with any kind of stressful load, which is almost certainly gonna overload uh, this uh, CPU with heat and cause it to thermal throttle in some way. So at idle right now, it looks like we're running at right around 40 degrees Celsius. It bumps up and down a little bit depending on background processes, that sort of thing. We have the unified statistics pull up. So we're gonna see the temperatures, we're gonna see the clock speeds here. Uh, I believe we're gonna see the voltage here as well. So we're also, by the way, gonna see the RPM of the fan. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that start button and see just what happens in because this heat sink is so small, whatever is going to happen is going to happen quite quickly because there's not much mass there to actually saturate with heat. So we're not gonna have to wait very long to figure out just what the CPU is gonna do, but let's go ahead and hit it. So virtually immediately the fan kicked in and the temperatures are already up into the upper 70s here, about 80 degrees Celsius within, oh, I don't know, 30 seconds of this test starting. So this hasn't taken long at all. Quick idea of how loud this thing is. It's actually not very loud. Like I suspected, the, the RPM on this fan isn't running nearly what it used to on some of those older AMD FX systems. It doesn't really sound like a jet turbo. So this seems to be a case of uh, the, the CPU is protecting itself here from heat. Obviously, the uh, clock speed is much lower than we saw it previously. It was up about 4.5 gigahertz. Now it's down to about 4.2, 4.3. Now it's back up to about 4.4 gigahertz. But it's maintaining that uh, stable temperature in the upper 80s. It looks like where it's going to be. 
uh, where it kind of stabilizes here. And you're going to see the clock speed fluctuate from here on out to maintain that stable upper 80 degrees Celsius range. You're not going to see this chip running, I don't think at least, up into the mid 90s or 100 degrees Celsius because it's going to protect itself by lowering those clock speeds to keep it much more in check with that uh, that temperature target of around 87 88 89 90 degrees somewhere in there i don't think we're gonna see it get much north of 90 degrees but we're gonna give it a little bit And yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing here. We're seeing that clock speed fluctuate between about 4.1 to 4.4 gigahertz, and that temperature has been rock solid right at 88 degrees Celsius, 89 degrees Celsius since it sort of hit that plateau. So that seems to be about the equilibrium point for this CPU with this cooler. So I didn't really expect to do a conclusion with this video because the idea seemed really dumb to me, but there are a few takeaways here. Uh, first and foremost, if you have a Ryzen 5600X, you can actually keep it reasonably cool or at least functionally cool enough uh, with almost anything out there right now on the market as far as CPU coolers go. Uh, at its stock behavior, this CPU is going to protect itself, or at least the motherboard that I'm using is doing a good job of allowing it to protect itself. This is a Gigabyte motherboard, by the way. But this CPU is not going to sit there and completely roast itself at 100 degrees plus Celsius. It's going to throttle back and keep itself in check. Now, with this terrible cooler, like this is an awful cooler, this CPU is still running at over four gigahertz, which is actually somewhat impressive to me. I expected it to have to throttle back a little bit more than that. And yeah, I think that's really the takeaway here is the Ryzen 5600X is a really, really good CPU that does not run hot. Even when you pair it with a terrible cooler, it's going to stay cool enough to still give you really solid performance. Now, obviously, by upgrading the cooler on this system, yeah, you would gain a little bit of performance back because this CPU is throttling back a little bit to keep its temperatures in check, but it's not going to claw back as much performance as I thought it would because I fully expected this thing to be throttling into like the low three gigahertz range at times to keep itself in check, and that just hasn't been the case here. So this is where I kick it back to you guys. Do you have a CPU out there that you are cooling with a a terrible configuration maybe you have a like a 12 core 24 thread cpu with a box cooler or something of the like let me know what your terrible cooling solutions are in those comments down below if you like this video give it a like share subscribe and comment all those things are very helpful for the channel you can follow me both on instagram and on twitter at hoosier hardware and as always i'll let youtube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch i'm shane with hoosier hardware and i'll see you guys in the next video